Hey guys, welcome to Motion Mondays. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about Motion's secret sauce, behaviors. Let's get right into it. Hi, I'm Danny Rubio, video resident here at Online Creator Studio. On this channel, we share the knowledge we've gained as photo and video professionals. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe. Today, we'll be jumping back into motion to discuss behaviors. Before we get into the nitty gritty of behaviors, I just wanted to let you know that behaviors can sometimes seem a little confusing and maybe daunting, but I can assure you that once you've understood them, you'll see how beneficial they are. I'm not perfect at motion, but as I said, I hope to share the knowledge that I've gained. So anyways, let's get down to the nitty gritty. If you've got motion, be sure to open it up and follow along. For this video, I'll be using the Final Cut title project. We'll set it to 1080p and go 10 seconds. To keep this video shorter, I've gone ahead and created a little lower third. You can find it in the description down below. Let's get into the actual animation of this. Now, in other similar programs, you'd wanna use keyframes. Keyframes are simply a marker on a property that can be then changed over time. For example, let's say we wanted to have this circle thing fade on at the beginning. We'd select it, navigate to the beginning of the timeline, go to opacity, and then click this diamond icon. Set the opacity to zero, then you would move to one minute and then set the opacity to 100. We've now created a keyframe in motion. Anything that has this keyframe button can be keyframed. If we watch it back, you'll notice it's very linear. That can be changed by adjusting the animation form. We'll talk more about this in a separate video, but for now, it's just important to know uh, what it looks like when adjusted. Here is linear and here is smoothed out. Okay, so we've done a very, very basic keyframe animation, but let me show you how we can do the same thing with behaviors. You can add a behavior by clicking on the behavior tab on the top uh, or by dragging it from the library. I prefer the behavior tab. For this one, we'll be using the basic motion fade in, fade out behavior. We see that it's simply fading in, and then we go to the end, fading out. We can see that by opening up the animation, and we can see that this has been simply and quickly added the uh, fade in, fade out. So that was super fast. Now let's move things along by adding a little bit of motion to this icon, or this little shape. I'm gonna go to behaviors, I'm gonna go to basic motion, and I'm gonna throw a spin on it. So now we have two here. Something that's really important when working with behaviors is that this block or uh, layer has a duration. So if I come over to two seconds and I hit circle, we now can see that it's gonna, if I come over here, let me make a couple adjustments. So I wanna make sure it's continuous rate and I'm gonna go at about 180 degrees. So if I come over here to the beginning, it's gonna spin and then right at two seconds, it stops. So because I wanna continue this for the, the the duration of the project, I'm going to uh, make sure that it go, extends all the way to the end, come back to the beginning, and then I can see that it then spins. Great, super easy, super simple. I can change, let's say if I wanted to change it to Y, I could have it spin that way, uh, but I don't, I wanna keep it as a Z. So this is where I think a lot of behaviors kinda come into play, is as you begin to learn in a kind of tweak and mess around with their parameters, which is what these are over here on the left hand side in the inspector. So now we have this little uh, circle um, icon done. Now let's go down to our line. So let's add another behavior here. I wanna add an animation of drawing. So if I come to a shape and I go to write on, this adds a write on one. Now this one's a little different. So I, we can draw in a race, which I don't wanna do. I just wanna do, uh, so if I show, let me just show you what that looks like. So if I come over here, really continuous, constant uh, flow, and then does a in a race. Let me actually disable this. So, so it draws it on and then it erases it. So for this situation, we don't want to do that. We just uh, want to add a draw. And then we wanna actually go to ease both. So if I open up the animation, we can actually see, if I come and click just, if I show, um, if I do constant, it's a straight line right here. You see this middle pink straight line. If I go to ease both, now it's added a little bit of curve. I don't have to do any animation. So that's a little long, so I'm actually gonna do it as long, uh, 
click O, and now it's a lot faster. So we have that. Boom. Now, because behaviors in the shape format um, overlap and will override one, we had to duplicate the line. And then we can come over here to the second one and we can go to behaviors, shape again. For this one, I'm actually going to show you how to edit from the library. So I come over here, we go to behaviors, we go to shape, we go to right on, and we're going to plop it right there. And because I know I want to go to erase, I want to make this reversed and I want to make this a ease both. Now that we have that there, I'm going to shorten this up. Come over here, make sure it plays, and it erases. So we now have that done. We can then go and up to here, and we're going to go to text. Now, for text behaviors, there's a lot that can be done. So if I come to go to here, text animation, there's scroll, sequence text, text tracking, type on, ton of different little things. For this one, I'm going to go to text energetic. I'm actually going to go to... Let's. I'm going to go to a static. Let's add a little static. It's kind of crazy. It's like a glitchy type effect. So there's that static. And then on this static, on the static out, let's change the amount so it comes down just a little bit more. It's a little too crazy. Frequency, I'm going to lower that a little bit too. Not too much. No. Change that. So again, these are all parameters that we can change. Until we get to something a little bit more. So let's actually elongate this. Sounds great. So we can watch the whole animation. It glitches in. It has my name. Comes here, glitches out, and then it fades in. Super simple. Now, if we had done this in keyframes, there would have been a lot more to do with, especially with the text portion. And that's why behavior is really powerful. It provides you a lot of quick and easy ways to try different things. And if you are unsure of what you want to look for, I really suggest that you come over here to uh, to the text animations or text sequences. Let's open up Glow and just kind of like look around. So this has like a gooey kind of feel. Uh, if I go back to energetic, let's do this dolly. It's a kind of dollying out. Uh, we have this peek in. It's kind of fun. Uh, see if we wanted to swap this out, we can swap it out and say, you know what? I want to have it I'm gonna peek out. So we drag that over here to the end. So once I zoom in, it's out. And you do want to kind of line it up so that it lines up right here at the end. So it ends out properly. So boom, and it's done. So you have static in, and then has a pop out. Behaviors allow you as an animator to quickly get things set and then provide you with controls to fine tune it to make it smoother or even customized to your desired idea. For me, I love behaviors because it takes much of the tedious work out of the way and allows for more experimentation. It also allows me to just get something out that's good enough. If you like this video, be sure to let me know what you'd like to learn next about motion in the comment section below. Hasta luego.